Hello, and thank you for joining us for Public Health in Action, where we discuss various public health matters here in Stanley County. Oral health is something that we oftentimes take for granted, and particularly as it relates to children, it's something that, uh, that obviously starts early and can often be overlooked. And so that's going to be a bit of our discussion today. And I'm pleased to have with me Dr. Mindy Turner. She is a pediatric dentist and runs our children's dental clinic at the Stanley County Health Department. Thank you, Mindy, for joining us. Thank you for having me. The Stanley County Health Department has had the children's dental clinic for uh, a number of years, going back to 2002. Uh, so to start out with, who can get services through our dental clinic? Historically, we've seen children who have Medicaid insurance, health choice insurance, or underinsured um, children who are at or below 100% of the poverty level. Recently, our Board of Health has voted for us to start accepting private pay insurance and uh, also fee-for-service. So basically now, it's pretty much open to, to any child? Yes. Yeah, very good. Uh, in terms of the types of services that are provided there, um, most people are familiar with kind of um, the services they may have gotten at a dentist's office, but what is provided there at the clinic? Um, services provided at our clinic, um, exams, uh, radiographs, cleanings, fluoride treatment, sealants, fillings, um, stainless steel crowns, we do space maintainers, limited orthodontic uh, treatment. Uh, we provide mouth guards. We do pulp therapies on primary teeth, baby teeth. Uh, we also do nitrous oxide anxiolysis. Um, we do extractions. Uh, we treat emergency patients. And uh, since I'm a pediatric dentist, we're able to go over to Carolina's healthcare system, Stanley, and treat children in the operating room. Yeah, and, and that actually kind of leads to my next question. Um, the OR privileges that, that you have there is a, is a fairly unique thing, I think, for public health dental clinics, but more importantly, it's a nice asset to have here in our community. Can you describe a little bit about how OR dentistry is important for, for some children? Well, we use that OR services over at um, CHS Stanley for those children who have uh, gross decay, multiple areas of decay in their mouth, who are unable to tolerate in-office treatment. So it would be four appointments in office for them to have to go mm -hmm. through. Um, and some children are not able to cooperate either because of their young age or because of special needs that they may have. Yeah. So it allows you to cover a lot of ground in, in one sitting, so to speak. Yes, and we're able to work with the anesthesiologist um, and the nurse anesthetist there. Very good. Well, I know that's a, uh, an important service that um, has several, uh, several aspects to it, and it's a, it's a little more complicated, I guess, in terms of the preparation for someone who's going through OR uh, procedures. Can you touch on that just a little bit? Yes, we do an extra consult appointment in our office. We also help the parents set up the history and physical that's required by their uh, primary care provider or their pediatrician. We do that the week before the procedure just to make sure the child's healthy, you know, issues. Um, it's a little more involved when we have special need children and we have to get clearance from their specialist, either for pulmonology, neurology, or cardiology. Mm -hmm. um, but for a routine visit healthy child is going to be a history and physical appointment and then they do an interview at the hospital as well before that. All right. So all of the steps are taken to to make sure that that visit's going to be as, as safe as possible for that, Absolutely. For that child. Children's dental care is, um, is, is critical. So many things that uh, children do sets their whole uh, pattern for their future in many ways, and I'm sure uh, uh, dental oral health is no different. But what age should children really start being seen for oral health concerns and needs? This may be surprising to some people, but actually by their first birthday. The American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry and the American Dental Association 
they both recommend that a child is seen by wow. their first day, a first birthday, and that is really um, to educate the parent to make sure they're doing what they need to do as far as their oral health and helping them brush and floss. Um, if they have teeth right. that are in right. contact, to be able to floss, um, to suggest diet recommendations, make sure they're not taking anything to bed at night in a sippy cup or a bottle, um, to make sure they're not having a lot of sugar in their diet. And I think one of the biggest things we see at our clinic is um, children who are drinking lots of juice because it's something that parents feel is good for them with the vitamin C, vitamins that are in the juice, however, really high natural sugar content. And pediatricians and dentists both recommend no more than four, four to six ounces a day. So it's a lot smaller amount than most parents realize. So we recommend if they're drinking the juices, it's with the meals and in between they need to do water or white milk or flavored water is fine, anything that doesn't have the natural sugars in it. So uh, that's a very good point because I think oftentimes during this age of you know wanting to do things natural or juice is better than quote soda, obviously in the minds of many people, uh, as it relates to the sugar and the, the effect on the teeth, it's, it's still not good. Yeah, interesting. The um, professionals who are there at the dental clinic, I mean, we're fortunate to have um, numerous types of folks, but if someone comes into the clinic, obviously they're gonna see a dentist typically, but who else are they gonna uh, see there? So we have two full-time dentists. I'm a pediatric dentist and Dr. Crow is a general dentist. We have two um, part-time dentists. Um, Dr. Dinges is a general dentist and also Dr. Burnside who has come out of retirement to help us. So he does yeah. hygiene checks for us, which is great. We also have two public health hygienists. So these are registered dental hygienists that have done additional training to be able to work um, once we make the diagnosis without our supervision. And we also have three dental assistant twos, which means they've completed a program at one of the community colleges to be able to uh, do expanded functions. Mm -hmm. And one front desk personnel, and then we have an office manager who also is a dental assistant too. So we're very lucky in the aspect that she's able to kind of do dual roles right, for us. Right, and uh, what would folks see in terms of, uh, I mean, once the person's there, I mean, clinically in terms of equipment and types of exam and uh, things that are necessary for y'all to cover uh, that oral care, they're gonna get the uh, x-rays and all of that that's gonna be there as well. So we're pretty uh, fully equipped, I guess. And well staffed. Yeah, yeah, very good. As a follow-up question, you mentioned uh, earlier a pediatric dentist, which we're fortunate to have you here, uh, who's also uh, I might say a homegrown person from Stanley County, which is very, uh, very special. But what exactly is a pediatric dentist and how does a pediatric dentist uh, differ from uh, a general dentist that most folks may see? A pediatric dentist is someone who has done two to three years of additional training um, to be able to work with children. So we usually have a four-year degree in a science. So I have a BS in dental hygiene from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And um, then I have my doctorate degree from Chapel Hill. And then in addition to that, I went to the University of Rochester to complete my certification for pediatric dentistry. So in essence, it's a, it's a, a children's dentist specialist in, in many ways, I mean, right. in layman's terms. And we get extra training in the operating room setting right. as well. Yeah, very good. Well, we're certainly fortunate to have you here in, um, in Stanley County. Recently, uh, we received some funding uh, from the Duke Endowment uh, through the, the, the CHS Stanley Hospital uh, to do some very specific dental services uh, for second and third graders in the public elementary schools. Um, tell us a little bit about that project and why it's important here in Stanley County. Because I think it's, while we have done things clinically that we're describing today, but one of the things that I know the health department wants to support are those community efforts that are trying to prevent issues as much as we can. So the 
AAPD, the American Association of Pediatric Dentistry, um, through scientific literature, has done reviews, and they say that um, about 90% of the decay actually occurs in the what we call pits and grooves of the top part of the tooth, or what we call the occlusal surface. So placing this these sealants really helps to eliminate um, future decay, and um, studies have shown that they stay in the teeth for up to five years, even longer, depending on how they're taken care of. Mm -hmm. So it's a great preventative um, service that we're doing, and it's low cost, so this is not costing us very much. So um, we worked with uh, CHS Stanley in order to acquire this grant, and we uh, have purchased a van and the equipment to be able to go into our 10 public schools. We are working with the second and third graders and the public health or the school health nurses um, who have done an amazing job in helping us coordinate this project. Um, we send out permission forms, which kind of goes over um, a brief medical history, and it also has permission um, that the parents sign off on, and it has a brochure that talks about dental sealants and um, how they work. And it's a very simple procedure. We just use cotton rolls and um, put it on either side of the tooth. We then uh, place, uh, we call it, tooth shampoo on the tooth, it's a phosphoric acid, and that helps um, to clean the tooth, and then we put the sealant material, which is a plastic, in the tooth, and then we have a light that cures it. And so I, I have a type of dot, and I was just gonna okay. show the yeah. parents, so it might be a little bit easier um, to see. I'm a visual learner, yeah. and this is um, the type of dot, and I don't know if they can get a good picture of what the grooves in the top of the teeth look like. This is what we call the occlusal surface. Um, so after we've placed the tooth shampoo and rinsed it off, um, we place this material. Now there's different types, but this one is pink, and I'm hoping they're going to be able to get a good shot of that. So it just sits in the grooves of the teeth, and really that's how easy it is. Um, then we go back and smooth it out just a little bit with the, what we call our, our baby tooth paintbrush. And then we put our light on there. and. It takes 20 seconds and then that tooth is sealed for several years to come and prevents decay. So and it turns it white so you can't see the pink after that. Yeah. Which makes the boys happy because they're not super excited about having <laughs> pink teeth. The girls love it, but not so much with the boys sometimes. Yeah. So now that's done on all of the, uh, primarily the back molars? The six-year molars. Um, we're targeting the second, third graders. We're hoping to catch the teeth once as soon as they come in actually, um, before they are, have the ability to get decay. And um, some of our girls are a little bit um, more developed than, than the boys, and so they're already past that point and some have decay. We've seen it in boys too, but it's more often in girls, especially the third graders. Um, but we're trying to seal all the six-year molars um, as soon as we can to prevent that decay. If the children don't have erupted six-year molars, um, then what we're doing is just doing a cleaning and placing fluoride and they've had the dental screening done. So we are providing some service some to those. Um, the children that have decay on their molars, um, we are working with the school health nurse to actually um, get those children referred out to dentist so they yeah. can get further care. Right. And you mentioned uh, fluoride, which which obviously is something that we've we've heard about a lot, and we know fluoride as it's in the water. It's used to uh, to assist and help our teeth teeth be more resistant. Uh, topical fluoride. Can you just touch on that a little bit and kind of how it's used? And uh, I guess it's probably not as um, quite as advantageous as the, as the sealant if you can get the uh, the actual sealants on there. Right, we recommend that um, children are seen by their uh, dentist every, well, at least twice a year um, to have the fluoride application. We use fluoride varnish, which is a very powerful type of fluoride, much stronger than what um, you get at the, the grocery store um, or pharmacy. And I was actually gonna go and show you how much to put on in recommendations oh, yeah. for toothbrushes. So the American Association of Pediatric Dentistry and the ADA recommend for under three just a rice sized amount. So, or a smear is what they call it. So no more than that. So a lot less than you would think. And then for three to six years old, they recommend a pea sized amount. 
so no more than that. So if you have a child who's doing the whole ribbon, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's not good. Much. Yeah, because they're swallowing too much of it. And definitely recommend um, parents start brushing as soon as the first tooth come in, comes in. Um, unfortunately, we have some parents that don't understand that that needs to be done and they're not using the fluoride. Um, we have a lot of areas in our county that do not have fluoridated water. So if you are on well water, it's even more important. We recommend doing this two times a day with the right size amount of the fluoridated toothpaste. And anything that has the ADA seal of approval on it, I don't know if you can see that, but um, that has the correct amount of fluoride. Yeah, because that was uh, my next question, how do folks know? Uh, that's the, the, the label kind of gives you your indication. And it doesn't have to be Crest, Colgate, whatever has the ADA symbol on is, is good. Right. Uh, talking about uh, children's oral health and having those good um, uh, starting practices, spend a few moments talking about that. And uh, you've alluded to, obviously, uh, some beginning steps, and one of them is trying to educate parents for them to brush the child's teeth. And I think that's something that uh, oftentimes may be overlooked. You kind of like think, well, we'll just wait until they get old enough and they have teeth and they're probably gonna, we'll teach them themselves. But there's some challenges with that. There are challenges and parents don't understand sometimes that the children don't have the hand dexterity to do all the movements they need to do um, to brush their teeth. So we have the rule of twos. You're supposed to go to the dentist two times a year. You're supposed to brush your teeth two times a day and you're supposed to brush for two minutes. Um, and it's very important that parents are, if not brushing the teeth, at least supervising and making sure the children aren't putting too much toothpaste on and that they're actually getting around their gums. Um, so often um, I actually see Children, when they brush, they just brush the tops of the teeth and they completely miss along the gum line. And so we see these white spot lesions or what we call decalcification starting. So um, it's very important um, to make sure that the children are brushing um, around the gums. And um, most children, I think, brush too fast. If you have a timer, they have these really cool yeah. apps now um, on the packages for a lot of the toothbrushes, especially the Disney ones. It'll have an app that you can download onto your phone and the kids like to brush because they're watching that while they're doing it. Um, just anything that children um, want to use to encourage them to brush longer, I definitely recommend. So if they like spend brushes, great. I think a manual toothbrush can do the same thing as long as the parents are supervising and making sure they're doing it the amount of time they need to. Yeah. I was gonna ask in terms of uh, the, the issue, you see a lot more of the spin or mechanical toothbrushes as opposed to just our tried and true old timey type. Yeah, and I tell the parents, whatever the child likes the most, that's what you want to go with, because we want to encourage them to have you know, healthy teeth for a lifetime. And I too think that when you're um, a parent, if you can brush in front of your children, that's gonna make them know that they should brush too. Um, and one thing I didn't mention is flossing. It's super important. Now, some kids have what we call primary space, which is great space um, between their molars. So brushing with the toothbrush is great. The majority of children that we see at our clinic don't have that spacing. And so it's very important to start brushing those back teeth and flossing um, to prevent decay forming from in between the teeth because a lot of parents don't realize that um, decay develops there where the toothbrush can't get into it. Mm -hmm. And they have these really cool flossers now. You don't have to use the long strings and put big hands in the little mouse. The um, flossers work just as well on those baby mm -hmm. teeth. Um, and they come in different designs now. Um, I'm a big fan of just the generic pack that you can you know, throw away, but um, you can rinse them off, um, use them several times till they start looking frayed. So it, it's pretty economical. It doesn't cost a lot and it's simple to do and you can prevent a lot of decay by helping your children floss at an early age. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think uh, with all the brushing and, and flossing sometimes, you know, it was, it was real and uh, you heard, used to hear more and more about it and then it kind of died. You didn't hear quite as much about it and it still has a, a lot of benefit, particularly starting those good oral habits early on. Yes. Do you think the, um, are, there, are there any other pieces of information you want to share with, uh, with parents about 
that that first year, I mean, that preparation for oral health, what do they need to be thinking about? I mean, you mentioned earlier about brushing their teeth for them, but other things, the sippy cups and the juice, but are there anything else? You would expect to see the baby incisors about six months old, and that can vary. One of my children did not get um, teeth until they were 14 months old, oh. so yes, you never know. And it can be plus or minus six months as to when the teeth erupt and the eruption schedule we have um, is typical of most children, but there's always going to be those outliers. So I would just say um, if your child has not developed teeth by six months old, don't panic. And, you know, for me, the later the better because you're going to have better brushers the older mm -hmm. they are. Um, so that's okay. Also, you want to be very, very careful about pacifier use. Um, the pediatricians recommend pacifier use until a year old because of SIDS, which is a great thing. But after that year, we really recommend discontinuing the use of the pacifier. Um, it can cause jaw changes, and the earlier you can stop that, the better. Um, it can cause the top dot jaw to constrict, and it can cause what we, we say overjet, where the front teeth actually come out um, a lot farther over the bottom teeth than we would want to see. So it can cause jaw changes pretty early on. Which I would assume creates potential complications down the road in terms of it does. further orthodontics or perhaps even oral hygiene related concerns. It can, it can. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, any other suggestions once um, uh, I guess the, the, the take home message is that going to the dentist as a child is not just uh, a, a patient, child patient and dentist kind of event. It really is something that the parents have to have an active role also in their oral health. And I think uh, your take home message is uh, that they're in some ways uh, could be one of the most key uh, players in their oral health. Any other thoughts or suggestions about that? Well, um, I don't know if most parents understand that the bacteria they have in their mouth gets transferred to the children. So um, once that first tooth comes in, it's just super important to start brushing. Um, and it's also important for moms or the primary caretakers um, to have healthy mouths too. Um, it's a transmissible disease. It's the most chronic um, disease in childhood so it's five times more common than asthma so wow. it, it, it definitely is uh, something that's going to affect our children and just having the whole family unit be on board and trying to get you know those first visits in early putting the fluoride varnish on there you know you could potentially have a child that never has a cavity mm -hmm. so it's really important to start early and uh, and do what you need to do I have a lot of parents come in and say well they don't like to brush and I say, you're a little bigger than they are. So my nine-year-old still gets his teeth brushed by his mom every night. He asked when I was going to stop. I said, baby, when you go to college. But we, we floss every, every night, and we brush every night. And so um, he can tie his shoes, but I still don't think he's a great brusher. So go behind your kids. That would be my number one point from all of this. Right. And I think uh, you, you mentioned the, uh, the issue of uh, nutrition and uh, you know, trying to reduce the amount of, of sugars that support the decay, really, or, or, or create the, the, the element for decay. Here again, healthy eating is not just about proper weight gain and trying to reduce obesity rates. It also has a, a, an important aspect to do with oral health. It does, and I try to tell our parents to please be label readers because you can pick different options. Um, there's Capri Suns that lots of children drink, which is the small juice packs. Well, Capri Sun has a roaring water, which has much less sugar, seven grams as opposed to 20 some grams. So um, just read the labels on everything you're getting for your child. Um, flavored water would be great. Um, Unfortunately, we have a lot of kids that like the fruit gummy chewable snacks, and that has tons of sugar mm. in it. And on the outside, it's advertised as being great because of all the vitamin C content, which it is good for that, but we see lots of kids that have decay associated with the fruit gummy. So you wanna be real careful um, and just make sure whenever you're purchasing something for your child um, that you're looking to 
try to get the least amount of sugar possible. Right. And I would think the less sticky, the better, too. Yes, it, definitely. <laughs> um, it, it, it strikes a, a thought that I just had in situations where, uh, let's say, you know, the, the, a family's somewhere and they, they you know, they've got a lot of sugary um, food, snacks or whatever at a party or whatever. They realize it's going to be, you know, a number of hours before they get home for uh, nighttime brushing. Is there anything they can do? I mean, other than pulling out a oh, okay. water. water, drink lots of water. That helps wash some of the um, the food that's in those grooves and the bacteria away. So if you can't brush, then water after. Um, and obviously, anytime kids are eating candy and sh really sugary substances, we recommend brushing. But if you can't, water is definitely the way to go on okay. that. Very good. So another dual role for a uh, multiple role for, for water. Um, well, that's been very, very, very helpful. Um, the types of folks you mentioned earlier, again, just as a reminder, um, in the past, we've had somewhat of a limited scope in terms of uh, the payer mix of who um, we see at the health department. Now it's essentially fully open uh, for pretty much all comers, uh, folks that don't have insurance or have um, difficulty paying. Could you speak to how we can possibly help those folks as well? The un uninsured, yeah. yeah. Um, what we're doing now with the sealant projects, if we're finding kids that don't have insurance, we're working with the school health nurses um, to get the family in um, and see the child. And we're doing that work for free mm -hmm. if the family's not able to, to do that. For those with the follow-up for the sealant. Yes. Sealant project. Yes. Uh, but also for others that may come to the dental clinic in general, just for, um, we do have a sliding fee scale too that, um, that we can assist some people with. Right, there's eligibility requirements yeah. for that and our front desk and our office manager um, handles taking that paperwork in, but yeah. I think it's a matter of bringing in um, pay stubs and maybe tax returns. Yeah. So if there's a concern or a question and you have a child that, uh, and let's say you don't have Medicaid or what have you, uh, and have concern, do call because it's possible that we can still provide some assistance to get that child the care. Um, well, you've covered a lot, Dr. Turner, and I appreciate uh, what you've shared. Any other take-home messages that you'd like to pass along to our audience? I would just say, that we want the child's first visit to be a very positive experience and some parents have some dental phobias that they sometimes share with their children so I would just say um, encourage the children to brush at home, bring them in early and, and just let them know that dentist and the staff in general is there to help them and we want it to be a positive experience for them because we want them to have healthy smiles for a lifetime. Yeah. Well, I think you hit on a very good ending take home message uh, about, and I forgot all about the fact that unfortunately, uh, dentists and dental care in general has been somewhat maligned uh, society because we often do. Uh, you'll hear uh, the jokes about, well, it's, uh, you know, I would, uh, rather be going to the dentist or something to have a, and it actually portrays kind of a negative comment to that uh, to that child, and we don't want that to happen. We want it to be a, as you said, a very positive experience, and the more parents can support that concept, the better. And I will say that I think uh, folks that come to the children's dental clinic there. Um, will find that it's very bright, it's very lively, we've got a lot of, uh, we try to keep all the aspects of uh, uh, very kid friendly. So uh, that's an important thing and hopefully they will have a good experience for continued care either through us or through other dentists here in the community. So, Well I want to take this time to thank you for what you do and giving back to Stanley County and uh, our children here and if folks have questions or concerns or uh, want to follow up with our dental clinic uh, you can feel free to do that the number will be on the screen and so until our next program I wish everyone a very healthy day thank you